I'm gassed up. I'm lit. I'm feeling great. You see, I got some I'm smoking something down right now. I'm just having a good time. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just super, super excited to kind of finally, finally have the record out. You know. I've grown scared. I was looking at like the credits and stuff. You played like every instrument on this. Like what's what's the like breakdown of like, how'd you write it? How'd you record it? Initially I wrote the whole album in like, in like a week and a half, two weeks. Like I write, I write everything and like really, really fast. So um, when I'm writing everything, I just, I play all the instruments because like I can't really um, take my time, you know, trying to get people to do this, do that. Cause, and then I get bored and I get over the song. I linked up with, just like my bandmates um, and some like really good players that I knew just called them over to the crib and just gave them the songs. and was like, yo, can y'all just play these real quick? Like, and just recorded all their, like their first and second takes. Okay. Um, because they're all like really high level musicians, super, super, super high level musicians, jazz cats, you know, church players, really good players, but I'm playing like really rock music and I wanted it to really be more about like the feeling of the music. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's why I just took their first takes. And then like some of, that's why it feels so raw and some of it feels like a little sloppy and, and some, some of the hits are off beat and stuff like that. I'll grab it then and I'll edit it and I'll cut it up with um, my boy, Dane, Dane Zone. He's a beast. Well, I love the idea of it not being like 100% perfect because I feel like that's always more interesting than something that's like extremely, you know, to the, to the beat or to the, you know, track or whatever it is. And I like my rock music loud. I like it punchy. I like it aggressive. I like it in your face. There's a couple songs on there that might make mom a little bit nervous. I got Travis McCoy doing a hardcore, ah, doing the whole thing, like screaming, screaming, talking about some real shit on there. So like for me, I just wanted to really try and capture the essence of the live show. For me, yeah. the live show is is so important to me. It's, it's, it's really what I live for is, is the performance. And my songs are really a, a catalyst for me to, one, get out my get my message out. How did you get uh, linked up with Travi McCoy? Yo, Travi is like the, the nicest dude in the world. He's, he's, he's the greatest dude. I'm originally from Buffalo. You know, see, this is my first interview for the... Uh, for the whole album with the alternative it's crazy because y'all rock with me since to the moon like in the very very beginning so like it's i, I love that i'm talking to y'all right this second i got the buffalo hat on and, and you know I'm, I'm from buffalo travis from originally from geneva new york we got a couple mutual friends my boy ran into him at a gas station and just pulled up on him and was like yo are you travis mccoy and he was like hell yeah what's up then he was like yo you probably should mess with my man q because he'd be doing the rock shit i was in the studio with this man brian brian chills um he's he's super dope we was just talking and he was like man why don't you just get travis on your album and i was like you know what all right cool so i just text travis like bro you want to get on the song he was like yeah man you sent me the shit back I have to ask, one of the, like, I know you've got this kind of, like, short interludes in between the songs on the album, which I, I loved. Can you tell me, was there, like, a backstory to this? My Shadow, my album, is in a way an homage to one of my best friends, Garfield Williams, who passed away in um, 2017. And all the interludes throughout the record are all taken on the course of me traveling to his funeral and returning home. I mean, he was my college roommate, one of my uh, one of my closest friends. Uh, he pushed me to even kind of do the music and and to keep doing the music and to try and stay out of trouble and just keep my head focused over here and like, yo, you can you can just do this. So, um, you know, when he passed it, it really kind of took a lot for everybody. Like, I got uh, like I got like his tattoo tattooed on me like that's my brother for life so mm -hmm. um thank you for sharing that i feel like just the the process of like recording like real life just adds so much to it you know beyond just the music itself that i think that's that's really beautiful i think i was made first aware of you and your music just with your i don't know if i call it like a tagline or like a slogan of like changing rock music forever. <laughs> like, can you tell me about like maybe when you first landed on this idea this concept of, of changing rock music you know rock music itself is a black genre it's it's been its inception was created by you know sister rosetta tharp mm -hmm. and um these great artists of the past have had their songs, you know, stolen, repurposed to become major hits that we know and love that are not credited properly. The main thing I've always said is we. It's not just me. Like, I'm a piece of a bigger picture that's going on within the genre. There's, like, so many artists around who are making incredible music 
that are pushing boundaries and also reclaiming uh, the genre that, you know, has been stolen and bastardized throughout time. I love rock music, you know, and I love um, the feeling that it gives me. I love the feeling at the shows, the feeling from the bass and the guitars when the drummer just bangs. I love that you can just pick up some instruments and, and not really know how to do every single thing, but you can just make some shit. And if it sounds good to you and your singer doesn't have to be Whitney Houston, but if they can hit a damn note, then we're going to be on and popping. And I think that, you know, there's so many kids, you know, that are like in like these these schools, these high schools in the hood, also who aren't in the hood, just like everywhere, suburban kids, black kids like that feel like they're not allowed to like rock music, to feel like they're not allowed to. But I just want to provide those same kids with an outlet when they chilling and they want to, you know, post up with their boys, they can throw on a Quentin Brock T-shirt. And the merch and everything going to look just as hard as the Griselda shit. It's going to look, you know, the music's just as popping. The features are just as big. The spectacle is just as, as much. The shows are just as hot and it's just as lively. And, and it's something for everybody to be able to experience and love. And, and they can be right there and stand on their own and feel like, yo, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm who I am and I can be the person I want to be. Bartiz, um, Mags, um, Dwayne. Obviously, Willow Smith, like mm -hmm. Mimi at the Altar, Mananka, on the experimental tip, Lorraine. Like, mm -hmm. I'm on the Lorraine album, and that and that goes crazy, too. Like, it's a huge movement that's going on that I'm just very, very grateful to be a part of. Mm -hmm.